All right, so I've gotten some requests on uh, how you can use the Helix as kind of a, not a MIDI controller, but to uh, be kind of like a MIDI hub with both MIDI and audio. So, you know, if you look at this diagram, you notice the Helix has a guitar plugged in. Uh, I've got a, a PRS that has dual outputs, so I kind of arranged to have a mag one cable for the magnetics and one cable for the piezo into the guitar in and the aux in. Uh, and then that stuff routes through the Helix path and comes out of the XLRs, right? Panned for electric and panned for the acoustic guitar tone on the XLRs. And then I have this uh, MIDI foot controller plugged into the MIDI jack on the Helix. And then I have one USB cable going from the Helix to an iPad. Uh, and those MIDI commands will pass through the Helix and then over the USB into the iPad and you can trigger, you know, backtracks and pads and various things. The audio that comes out of those, uh, you can route, you know, up to eight channels, but I really just use channel one and two because the Helix um, will pass USB input channels one and two directly to outputs without needing to configure path blocks. So in these apps, I route everything to outputs one and two. Uh, in this case, you're seeing output one is just the in-ear stuff, clicking cues, and then output two takes uh, audio that I'd want to go to front of house and puts it to the right channel for like pads and backtracks and stuff. So I've had requests to um, kind of demonstrate how this works. Uh, so what I did was I took my Looptimus foot controller I've got a USB cable plugged in, but that's just for power. It's just powering it. Uh, and I got a MIDI cable, and that MIDI cable um, plugs in to the, the MIDI input on the back of the Helix. Um, and that's it for that, right? I just have the MIDI cable from this Looptimus controller go into the Helix. Uh, on the Helix, I have a USB cable plugged in that comes up to the Apple camera connector kit. And I've got a charge cable plugged into the Camera Connect 2 as well, and then into the, the iPad. On the Helix, um, I've got an interface up here, a Tascam interface, and it only has two XLR inputs. So for right now, just to match my diagram, I'm taking the quarter inch out, going into my DI box, and then the two XLR out of the DI box into my interface, which goes to my studio monitors. Um, my guitar is plugged in, but the guitar routes to uh, to XLR, um, and I don't have other XLR, so you won't hear the guitar. But the purpose of this video is really just to demonstrate how you can set it up to pass MIDI and, and to use a foot controller with the Helix. So you come into global settings to the MIDI section. I've got the Helix on channel one. So MIDI through has got to be on. And the MIDI over USB has to be on. Um, and with those two things on, when the Looptimus sends a MIDI command into the MIDI jack on the back, the Helix will pass that MIDI command out of the USB and it'll go to the iPad. When the iPad triggers some audio, that audio comes back through the USB. And now again, if I go into global settings and I go to the in out section, it says USB in one slash two destination. This is telling the Helix where to route that audio that's coming in from the iPad. So I've got it set to quarter inch because it's gonna come out of the quarter inch and then into my DI box, convert to XLR, and then to you know what would be the front of house. Uh, this knob in uh, one slash two trim, you can use that to adjust the audio level. Uh, so again, just to reference the diagram, the foot controller sending a MIDI command into the Helix, that's using the through capability to pass it over USB to the iPad, triggering audio to play. The iPad sends the audio back through the USB over channels one and two. And I have the uh, USB in one, two destination set to quarter inch. So it goes out quarter inch to my DI box and then it's coming into my interface to my speakers. So, and I brought up this loudness meter just so we can see which channels are getting audio. Um, so the first thing I'll show you 
is, okay, so this is sample tank. Uh, and it's just pads. Actually, this is an organ. Okay, so I got this set up for an organ. And that's uh, the right channel only. All right, so with that up, I can put my loop the missing pad mode, which is in right now, key of A, and I can play chord one. And I can play chord four. And it's doing fifths is what it's doing. And now I'll play two, and back to one. And that's coming out through just the right channel. Just my right studio monitor is picking that up. Now, if I was playing guitar, I could route that to the right, the left, or whatever I wanted to. So that's pads from Sample Tank. If I flip over to Garage Band, I'm sorry, that's Organ from Sample Tank. On Garage Band, uh, I have a pad set up. It's coming out of the right channel only because I've got a pan to the right in Garage Band. And same thing, loop them some pad mode. And I'm just triggering it. And I could hook an expression pedal up too and control volume. You know, and I just don't have one hooked up right now. So I can also do the backtracks. If I bring up Prime, uh, now on the loop to miss, what you do is you hold the stop button down and you change the mode to the default mode. Now that it's in default mode, if I hit button one, it'll launch track one. So hit button two, it launches track two. So I'll hit one. Intro, two, three, four. So notice, I'll hit it again. Intro. Only the left three, four. Only the left was playing the click and the cues. First, two, three, four. And the right is playing the instrumentation. And that's because I'm sending here, I'll hit stop to stop it. And that's because on Prime, once you have it hooked up to the helix, you get eight channels of audio. And I'm sending the uh, instrumentation out channel two and the clicks and the cues out channel one. If I touch this, you'll notice it'll, it'll allow me to go one through eight. I can send it out whatever audio channels I want. I could do it in stereo and, and send it out of one and two or, or three and four, you know, whatever you want. Um, like I said, I use channels one and two because I don't have to put any blocks in my path to get that audio to come out. Uh, you know, if I were to use any of these other channels, three through eight, um, then I would have to put an input block in my path and take up some of those effects that I'm using for, you know, those effect paths I'm using for the electric and the acoustic guitar signal. Um, so therefore I don't do that, I just use one and two. Uh, if I wanted more channels to go to front of house so the sound guy could have individual control over these instruments, uh, I wouldn't use the Helix for that. I would, uh, I have an iConnectivity, um, you know, uh, Audio 4 Plus that I would use instead. And I would hook up the iPad to that and then get multi-channel out and I would send that to the soundboard. But for a quick portable setup with MIDI control over multi-tracks or supplemental pads or organ sounds or, uh, you know, just passing MIDI through the Helix, which passes MIDI to the iPad, which then passes audio back to the Helix, and then I can set it to output quarter inch, not impact my guitar signal at all, still have my XLRs available for guitar, uh, and it makes for a pretty convenient setup.